What's up? It's me, Tommy Mac. In this video, we are talking wood, wood properties, and a little bit of lingo to make sure you and I can stay on the same page. Wood basically comes in two varieties, softwood and hardwood. Softwood trees have needles like pine trees and spruce trees, and they're super light and grow really, really fast. Hardwood trees, they have leaves like oak trees, maple trees, walnut trees, hickory trees, there's a zillion of them. And they grow slower, that's why they're way more dense. Whether it's a hardwood tree or a softwood tree, it really doesn't matter. When it gets cut down, it is waterlogged and it needs to be dried. Because as furniture makers, we need this material to get buzzed down, moisture content around eight to 12%, all right? There are two typical ways of drying wood. One is with a kiln, and that's basically a manufacturing process where they bring a bunch of wood into like this huge building and they can control the environment and they bring heat and moisture in and they can bring the content, the moisture content of all that wood down slow. But it's way more complicated than you think because each species has its own individual parameters and how it needs to be dried. The other way is really simple. It's called air dried. And it's basically like if I cut down a tree and turn it into boards at my house and I left them outside to dry. The only thing you need to know about that is that it takes one year per inch of thickness to dry. So this piece of wood right here, which is two and a half inches, would take two and a half years to dry before I could use it. All right, that was a mouthful. <laughs> now, wood comes in two different ways, common stock or figured stock. Common stock is basically what you see in every box store. Your whole house is made out of that stuff. The other stuff is basically what I like to call Abbey normal. <laughs> all right, something happened to this tree when it was growing in the wild. And all these like lines you see on this piece of tiger maple, a drastic grain direction change. But trust me, if you know how to work with this stuff and you get really good at it, you can create some really elegant, beautiful furniture. So there are basically two cuts of wood you can get at the lumberyard. One is flat sawn, and that's right here on the bottom. You can see that the growth rings are running parallel to the face of the material. The other one is quad sawn, all right? And you can see that it's running perpendicular to the faces, all right? And basically, when a piece of wood shows up at your place, it looks like this. Just so we're all on the same page, these are called the edges, these are called the ends, and these are called the faces. The thing we need to remember as furniture makers is cutting a big board down to small parts, this stuff is gonna move. There are two things that make a piece of wood like this move. One is tension, and the other one is humidity. So a piece of wood like this is under tension. Tension gets into this piece of wood by the way that it grows, or the drying process, if you dry it too fast, all right? And the other thing is that this wood is gonna move depending on the humidity in its environment. So if it's really dry in January, like this 12 inch piece will be 12 inches. This same piece of wood is gonna be 12 and a quarter in the middle of July. So just make sure you understand tension and humidity when it comes to building parts for your piece of furniture. Because believe me, you don't wanna build like say a, a, a door with a tight panel in the middle of winter and then have the whole thing crack apart in the middle of summer. So that's why when we make furniture, we always rough mill material and let it acclimate to our environment. And then we'll go back and we'll final mill it to make sure that it's flat and stable, all right? Always keep these little things in mind and hopefully your furniture will be as nice as mine. I'm Tommy Mack and I'll see you next time.